Aside from what's happening in markets, the big talking point, of course, is the start of the World Cup. And I'm joined by Viviane Rodriguez to sort of help discuss with me what's likely to be the big talking point. And it's not going to be the football, is it? Well, it's, it's a tall order for Yellen to beat uh, some of the uh, teams, um, you know, fighting each other on Wednesday, especially Australia and Netherlands. But um, when it comes to the Fed, what we're going to see probably is steady as she goes. You know, we are not going to see any big surprise. They are going to keep on with the taper, and rates are not going to rise until sometime far into 2015. But Yellen may acknowledge the fact that there's been improvements in the labor market. They may want to reiterate the message that the U.S. economy is picking up after the very slow start after the winter blues. And that could set up the stage a little bit for some opportunistic trades, especially at the front end of the curve. Now, this sort of steady as she goes policy that's being well flagged by central banks does have a downside, doesn't it? I mean, we have extraordinary low levels of volatility in conjunction with equities near record territory, or actually in record territory, and bond yields very low as well, and particularly credit spreads, which is the area you focus on. What concerns you the most when we look across for the next few months? Well, exactly as you said, I mean, volatility is very low. Spreads now have tightened for levels less seen in the build-up to the financial crisis. So, for example, corporate spreads for investment-grade bonds are now trading close to what is called the century mark, just basically 100 basis points over U.S. Treasuries. That's very little. So if you are a bond portfolio manager and you make a real wrong call right now, the potential for you to get crushed is very high. So a lot of people are beginning to get a bit concerned with the fact that there's no volatility volatility, spreads just keep tightening, stocks just keep going up. So, so would, where does that end? What is the end game of this? And what happens if we do see a reversal in the fortunes very quickly? Now, one possible trigger for a reversal could be a very important asset class, and that, of course, is the oil market. We're seeing U.S. oil prices steadily rising. And in fact, thanks to this sort of renewed instability now in Iraq, We've seen oil prices in the U.S. hit their new high for the year. In fact, they're at $106 a barrel. It's the highest level we've seen oil prices since last September. Uh, what's the downside here of rising oil prices? Well, obviously, you know, it could affect the economy, global's economy, not just the U.S., uh, you know, Europe. I mean, everybody at a very particular and important juncture when we really need to see growth picking up in places like the United States. We've been growing subpar or very slow. People want to see these numbers really coming up. And also very important to remember that even though everybody's shutting up for the summer and there's this big summer lull in the United States especially, but we've seen in the past some very big swings in July and August. Remember when ECB said they were going to do everything yes. they could to savor the euro and how markets moved that fast. So a good investor is a vigilant investor and uh, should you know watch the World Cup but also keep the eye glues on the uh, screens. Great, Viviani, thanks so much.